Right on. Hi, my name is Jaakko. And actually, can you, Christopher, I'll show you so I can keep my hands here to change the slides. But a um, little presentation now about how to make these aspects that we've gone through about many things that might help, for example, our immune system more fun. And about a decade ago, I founded and ran several smoothie bars here in Finland for years. And I found several things out during those years. So I'm not a huge fan of specific recipes, but today I'm going to actually give you one. And at this point, I want to also emphasize that there are so many variations of all of these things that even though I'd like to be the guy who's like, yeah, and this goes well, and this goes well, that's not the optimal thing. So the more is not better. Sometimes it's just easier to keep it simple and focus on certain aspects. We're going to use cacao as a base, as a carrier for all the other things that we're going to do. The next one. And this is fun because we often think about chocolate as these bars and this treat, but originally, and most of the human history, it was always considered as this bitter drink. And I want to kind of reignite a very, very old idea here. The next one. Because when I started to look into the history, this is literally thousands of years old idea. It wasn't Marxism or Dave Asprey or anyone who basically came up with the idea with using certain stimulants as a carrier with fats to enhance the absorption of other things that we might put into our coffee or, in this case, chocolate. And I'm a big, bigger fan of chocolate rather than just caffeine, because caffeine is a central nervous system stimulant. And in this category of methylxanthines, theobromine, the main stimulant, the main alkaloid in chocolate, it's much more for your heart and your cardiovascular system. So this would be something that I'd personally do before any social interactions, before sex, before something, before training. Because cacao works as a vasodilator. That's why what it was always used to amplify other things. So now when we hear about niacin being used in a certain way to enhance the absorption, it's essentially nicotine has the exact same properties. And if you use nicotine with all the shitty chemicals, for example, in tobacco, you're just driving those nasty chemicals deeper into your system instead of doing something like this. So the next one. These guys figured out something long time ago. And then we came to the next one, the, the Aztecs and Olmecs and these ancient civilizations. They used these molenios, these ancient blenders, to do something that we're going to do next. So we don't have that much time, so I'm going to keep this short. And yeah. That will be the final recipe. So a few concepts here today. First of all, if we're going to use cacao, I really like personally cacao paste. So this is basically 100% dark chocolate. Cacao beans that come from inside of the cacao fruit are pressed down to these solids that still have the fat intact. And if you've heard about the properties of chocolate, dark chocolate, cacao, all the flavonoids and epicatechins and all that, that's in the color. Those color pigments are basically an indicator for that chemistry. So here, I'm going to put quite a bit of cacao paste here, like a four tablespoons. But that gives the texture, that gives the body for a drink like this. So it, it's not this thin, just kind of a super liquidy, drink. But the cacao powder, which is basically if you press the oil out of that paste, you get the cacao butter that's often actually used in the cosmetics and it's a really nice oil on your skin, for example. But if you press the oil out, you're left with this dry cake, basically, that's then powdered into cacao powder. So this is like, a, if you think about berries, like a berry powder extract. So a few tablespoons of this. And now we have a really nice carrier or amplifier. And, you know, 
I think all of the weird Mayan calendars and this and that were highly inspired by these types of drinks. So it's good to rem remember that caffeine gives a certain state of mind and certain types of inspirations. And for example, cacao might be even more creative and less like industrially uh, representative of our inner mind. Anyhow, that's cacao. Then, at this point, I want to remind that this is super high in potassium. And that's like the old idea that why you have salted nuts. All the nuts are super high in potassium, so you want to balance it out with sodium. So salt, of course, is a nice balancing agent at the level of electrolytes and also amplifies the, the flavors. So that's in there now. Then, one point that people often use just MCT oil or C8 or any of these ketosis-inducing oils. And I like the idea that whenever you use some type of a fat, you can also see that uh, individual ingredient as a carrier. So here I have an MCT oil with astaxanthin. That's the, uh, that's the red pigment that gives, for example, salmon its color and it's added to their feed to increase the amount of this specific compound in the salmon. So that's a super high, interesting antioxidant, and you could use CBD or something else that's very good for the immune system in the same way. But next is the key point. If I say for people that, for example, these nice mushroom extracts, here I have a reishi mushroom for, from Finnish forest, one of my all-time favorites. This is not the best tasting stuff ever. So this is kind of a practical way to make it actually something that I could basically trick my mother to drink or something. Hey, here's a nice chocolate drink. Do you want to try? And then we get actually the herbs inside of the body. Because that's the classic idea in uh, thonic herbalism, in Taoism was that, you know, the herbs only work if you do them. So if I'd ask, like, how many of you have heard about ginseng or any of these, like, really old herbal things? Many of you, yeah, yeah, I've heard about it. Then, like, how many of you use it? Then it's like two hands. Because it's too, too difficult to do. So this is the key agent for immune system right now. And many of the studies have focused on the synergistic benefits of the highly branched beta-glucans, alpha-glucans, xyloc-heteroglucans, all the goodies in these mushroom polysaccharides that basically feed our immune system to be more smart against different pathogens. So that's the key concept. And in herbalism, you always have kind of the main thing and then the supporting herbs, typically just one or two. So this, again, boils down that Somebody yesterday showed me the list of the smoothies that he's doing. Like Ben Greenfield said that these 17 things are good, and this guy said, and then there's like 40 different things and it tastes like shit. So that's not optimum in a long run. Anyhow, there's mushrooms, there's oils, there's cacao, and then just a few things that I like to do for this type of drink. Because this is also a lot for our mood, kind of neural enhancement. And I'd like to do a little bit of curcumin, which is fat-soluble compound. So probably something like uh, 17 milligrams, something like that. And many people use this just like a general anti-inflammatory agent. But most of the studies, most of the highest quality studies are actually uh, around depression. So if you lower the inflammation in your brain that affects our mood, that's something to look with turmeric or curcumin. So that's our kind of second, second kick with the mushrooms. And then some spices, just to add the flavor. And vanilla, of course, goes really well with chocolate. It's a very old heart medicine also. It's not just for the flavor. All of the spices have medicinal properties. And then I'm going to just use this chai mixture with some cinnamon, some cardamom, to help the digestion, to kind of make the body really nice in flavor. And all of these are really good for digestion. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing any type of thing. Just add some spices. It might be mint, it might be anything. Just a little bit of that. And then a little bit of coconut milk for the body, just a few deciliters. And this has been a big part of my daily routines for over a decade now. I have a chaga and fresh ginger tea, even though it doesn't have tea leaves, so it should be called infusion or decoction, if you want to be correct. But point being that I started to do even coffee using this type of a liquid instead of just water. So again, kind of stack the odds in your favor. Whatever you can do that's fun, that's actually pragmatic. This was for me like, okay, I can use that, this as a base liquid for some type of a broth or a soup or boil my rice in it or you name it. But the point being that we're not just, you know, always going to use coffee or some lousy tea, but this type of a, you can see the color. And this color comes especially from the outer layer of chaga. If you visited the Chaga Health booth, for example, they have the big chaga chunk there. And the outer layer produces these highly branched melanins, same color pigments that basically give the color when we get tanned. So that's one aspect that we really are now building this highly antioxidant-rich, mushroom-centered chocolate drink that will now be blended. And thanks for the team. I was missing this lid and was just coming here to the state and then like, oh, that's going to be a problem. So thanks, thanks for you to getting it after all. That's the oldest joke in the book. I have to always make it. That's about it. So I want to share this idea just because over the years, with all the tools, these types of things have been around me and kind of stayed the time for years. So you might find some inspiration using cacao with these types of immune boosting or just fun drinks. Thank you very much. If somebody wants it, I don't know what happens to this, but I'm going to bring it back there and then somebody will figure out if you guys want to try it. Thank you very much.